Hi, I'm Mr. Fullerton, and I'd like to talk about the de Bray wavelength today. Our objective is going to be to calculate the wavelength of a moving particle. So to begin, we know electromagnetic radiation has both a wave and a particle nature, which begs the question, do particles also have a wave nature? Einstein hypothesized that photons could have momentum even though they have no mass. And that's kind of where things stood for a while, until around 1922 when American physicist Arthur Compton performed a very famous experiment. He shot an X-ray photon so it collided with an electron in a piece of graphite. He saw that a photoelectron was emitted, but the original X-ray was scattered and is actually re-emitted with a lower frequency. It had lost some energy and some momentum. So it led him to a couple conclusions. One, photons do have momentum, and photons also obeyed the law of conservation of momentum and conservation of energy. Now, following up on this, in 1923, French physicist Louis de Bray looked at electromagnetic waves and said, well, if electromagnetic waves behave as moving particles, moving particles should also exhibit some wave properties. Maybe they're kind of two different faces of the same coin. And he confirmed this by shooting electrons through a double slit and observing the diffraction pattern, very similar to Young's double slit experiment, but this time shooting electrons, indicating that the electrons act like a wave because diffraction is a wave property. And the smaller the particles, the more apparent the wave properties. And we came up with what's known as the de Bray wavelength. Lambda, the de Bray wavelength, is equal to Planck's constant h divided by the momentum of the particle. So you can see with smaller momenta, with much smaller particles, you tend to have larger wavelengths. So a sample problem, moving electrons are found to exhibit properties of, well, particles, waves, both particles and waves are neither particles and waves because they're moving particles, they exhibit properties of both waves and particles. So the correct answer here must be three. Which phenomenon best supports the theory that matter has a wave nature? Electron momentum, electron diffraction, photon momentum, or photon diffraction? Well, wave nature, that means we must be looking for diffraction. Diffraction is a wave property only. And if we want the, to support the theory that matter has a wave nature, we should look for something that has diffraction of matter. Electrons are matter and they diffract, so our best answer here must be two, electron diffraction. Sample problem three, the wave particle duality is most apparent in analyzing the motion of a baseball, a space shuttle, a galaxy, or an electron. Well, if you look at the de Bray wavelength, lambda equals h over p, we're going to see the biggest wavelength, the most wave properties, where we have the smallest momenta. And that's going to occur where we have the smallest masses. So we want to look at something that has a very small mass. Baseball, space shuttle, or a galaxy? Looks like our answer must be an electron. It has such a small mass that the wave nature will be more apparent than for those other objects. Finally, let's calculate the de Bray wavelength for a tennis ball, 57 grams of mass, moving at a speed of 30 meters per second. Well, the de Bray wavelength, lambda, is Planck's constant divided by the momentum of the moving particle, or 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds divided by momentum. Well, momentum is mass times velocity, so our mass is 0 0.057 kilograms. Got to convert grams to kilograms first times its velocity. 30 meters per second. If I plug all that into my calculator, I get a wavelength around 3.88 times 10 to the minus 34 meters. An extremely small wavelength. And that's why it's not apparent or visible to us in everyday life. The wavelength is so small, we don't even observe it. You have to have very, very, very small particles in order to observe the wave nature of the particles. Hopefully this gets you started with the with the uh, the Bray wavelength, and if you need more help, more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks, and make it a great day.